Good evening, Sunday the 14th of February 2021. This is the normal and usual Democratic Alliance Labour Report. Welcome on board and please share this with your friends and family and business associates. I thank you for that. With the non-event of the Sona 21, we merely heard the usual promises. Noting the non-delivery of the promises of years gone by, it was something that we expected. Nothing new came out of this. Nothing changes. Unfortunately, we were all expecting something, but nothing at all. Still, not one person has been vaccinated in South Africa. We still don't see any plans exposed as to how and when. Uh, despite everyone asking, including the trade unions, have been begging to find out how is it going to be distributed. Nothing. It's most frustrating and obviously can be compared to the non-rollout of the antiretrovirals during the Mbeki era. You all recall that? Millions of South Africans got sick because of that. Millions died. It's unfortunate. There is some little bit of good news, and that is the extension of the emergency TERS payment from the UIF. That's great. It's fantastic. But it's only for certain industries, and again, we don't know which industries we should find out probably tomorrow, but I don't know if they're going to ever do it properly. What we do wish, of course, is that the Department of Employment and Labour would at least pay out the previous claims where people had claimed. I'm still dealing with hundreds, literally hundreds of people who have not been paid out in the previous claims, right back to a year ago. It's one year now since people claimed in March 2020, and we still haven't seen a lot of those people being paid. So it's fantastic to say we're extending it, but pay it. We're hoping to see it a little bit more efficient. The senior management of the UIF are still on full pay, on suspension, not working. I presume they'll get their increase as well. But again, nothing changes with government. Well, this evening, Sunday the 14th of February, I want to talk a little bit about the workplace and the vaccination, if and when the actual vaccination arrives. But we do need to talk about it, what happens at the workplace. I'm Michael Bagram, the Labour spokesperson for the Democratic Alliance. And as I said, it's Sunday the 14th of February 21, almost a year now since the lockdowns happened and the economy was destroyed. Well, we don't have specific regulations as to the actual vaccine itself. What we do know is that you can't... Uh, force people to be vaccinated, that we know. We have a constitution in South Africa and that's still rule supreme. And in fact, at one of those family chats that our president had, he said people won't be forced to take the vaccination. Well, that's good news. And in fact, it's good to see that he wants to at least adhere to the constitution. We have right to bodily integrity. So no one can be forced to take that vaccination. But, of course, the question that is asked is at the workplace. Do you allow people in if they haven't been vaccinated? Do you try and somehow pressurize people to take the vaccination? Yes, there are certain workplaces where we're going to start expecting that. And I'm getting hundreds of calls from people, from people who have domestic workers, to say what happens if their domestic worker refuses to be vaccinated? to large corporations who are phoning me and saying, well, we want our workforce to take the vaccination. We're going to encourage them, but what do we do with those who refuse? What about the others who are gonna say, well, we don't wanna to come to work with people who haven't been vaccinated. So these are interesting quandaries. They're interesting in the sense of how do we implement the law and where do we take it from there? Well, remember, we cannot force anyone to take the vaccination under any circumstances. But can we dismiss? Can we refuse them entry? And of course, education is the real answer. Obviously, we're going to have to consult with staff. The consultation is all important. 
You can't just push it on to people and say everyone will be vaccinated or you can't come to work. It's going to be expected of you in terms of our labor law to undergo a consultation process. That consultation process must be carefully done, must be documented. It must be a monument to discussion at the workplace. I would suggest those discussions even be recorded in terms of um, uh, tape recording, um, in terms of people taking notes. If there is a trade union, engage the trade union. You must engage the trade union, the shop stewards. And of course, as part of that exercise, you will then try and educate the staff as to why it must be taken. What we do need to remember is that every single employer owes a duty of care to their staff, to their customers, to people that come into the workplace. There is a duty of care. And that duty of care has to be extended to illness. We know that in terms of tuberculosis, TB, that's a notifiable disease. You won't have a staff member come to work who has TB. You won't have a staff member come to work and would maybe infect others. And especially if someone's not compliant with their medication. We're waiting to see if regulations come out similar to that in South Africa, but they haven't as yet. So we need to actually, as an employer, we need to very carefully watch how the rest of the world has done it and how do we fit this in with our Labor Relations Act. It's absolutely vital. So that duty of care, which we owe to all the employees and the public, has to be specifically implemented. The environment must be as safe as reasonably practical. What happens, for instance, if you're a pharmacy? Do you expect your pharmacists who are going to interact with other individuals when they come in to have been vaccinated? I would suggest yes, of course. And I would suggest that we do like some of the international companies are doing, that the pharmacist wears a badge and saying, I've been vaccinated, have you been? And that would be a badge of honor. But there are lots of other ways that can be done as part of the consultation. Remember, every single employee must be consulted. That's central to the debate as to whether you can actually take action against staff who refuse to be vaccinated. Remember, we have pieces of legislation. There's the Occupational Health and Safety Legislation, the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, the Labor Relations Act, Employment Equity. Then there are things such as conditions of service, contracts of employment, what about agreements that you have with trade unions already? All that has to be taken into account and part of that discussion as to whether you can force your staff to either vaccinate or to stay home. Obviously, if people don't want to be vaccinated and they can do their job at home, I would suggest that that's what you do. But, of course, each case has to be challenged around and looked at the merits very carefully. It's something that we need to discuss with our staff, we need to discuss with the trade unions, and if you belong to a bargaining council, this should be on the agenda of that bargaining council. It's an interesting exercise. Of course, there are many bodies in the country that will be debating this. I mean, NEDLAC, for instance, is probably going to put it on their agenda, and we wait and see what comes out of that. But while we're waiting, I think each business has to very carefully consider how they're going to handle this problem. Of course, there are ways and means of doing these things. Um, I know that in England, I was speaking to labor lawyers there who tell me they've offered rewards to the staff who get themselves vaccinated. People wear a badge of honor and say that I've been vaccinated. It becomes a, a badge of pride. It's interesting to see. Then you can offer people time off in exchange for that. You can offer people bonuses, increases, all sorts of things to encourage people to be vaccinated. Let's watch this space. I will come back to it as soon as we see any regulations. I think at the end of the day, a lot of it is going to be boiled down to education and to discussion. So thank you for listening to me. It's Sunday, the 14th of February, 2021. It's Michael Bagram, the Democratic Alliance Labour spokesperson.